welcome back to Travelling Box with me, Tanya. And this is a topic that comes up a lot on various caravanning forums and uh, Facebook groups and things. And it's about camping or caravanning with cats and dogs and how to do so safely and all the rest of it. And as we caravan with three dogs and a cat, and we used to camp with the three dogs as well. Um, yeah, I just thought I would share with you how I do things, um, starting with how we travel in the car, because uh, cats are different to dogs in their traveling needs, and everyone's got a different way of doing things. And then moving on to feeding them, where they sleep, uh, where Perry goes to the toilet, where the dogs go to the toilet, how to keep them safe inside the van and yeah, just things that, that we do that works for us. As I say, everyone's got their own way of doing things. So just because I do it doesn't mean it's the only way to do things, but um, it's perfectly reasonable to expect to be able to have a lovely caravanning holiday and keep your dogs and cats safe. So here we go. So let's start with the car and travelling to a campsite. All animals have to be transported with you in the car. They are not allowed to travel in the caravan. Um, so don't think that you can safely put them in the caravan and tow that with your pets inside. It's not legal, it's not safe, and it really wouldn't be, be kind for your pets at all. So they need to be in the car with you. And to that end, they need to be safe in the car with you. And dogs and cats have different needs. Um, with dogs, uh, you could have them in the car, stop somewhere if they need a piddle, take them for a walk. Cats don't wait to go for a walk before they need to go to the toilet. When they need to go, they just wanna go and they won't hold it in and wait. Uh, my Perry certainly won't. Um, this is Perry. Oh, he's enjoying the sunshine today. Say hi, Perry. When he needs the toilet, he needs the toilet. Um, so what we have in the car are pet carrying baskets. And I have two. I have a large one and a smaller one. And the smaller one I use as a litter tray. And it's just an ordinary pet carrying basket, the one that's got loops that fit over the, the rear seat rests, headrests. I line that with a black bin bag and then fill the bottom with cat litter so that when he needs to go to the toilet, he can pop into that, do his business, stink out the car, which is lovely, uh, and then pop out and get comfortable again. Um, and that works really well for him and I've tried various different methods of transporting Perry and this is the one that he is happiest with. Um, I've tried pet carriers, big and small, um, and he's never been happy in any of them and whined the whole journey. This way he's very, very happy and content. The other larger basket is for my two chihuahuas. Here's one. This one's Tori. Tori with the broken ear. And her sister Luna. Hello Luna. Did I say your name? Here's Luna. <laughs> they are both very happy in the basket. And Perry tends to join them in the basket, which is super cute. Um, it's big enough for all three of them. And they settle down in there and go to sleep for the journey, which keeps them very happy and uh, content. As for Amber, my standard poodle, she prefers space. She likes to be able to lay out. And although I've got a seven seater car, she doesn't like car seats she doesn't feel safe on them she needs a, a larger base so she travels in the boot 
um, and finds that the most comfortable place to be. So that's how we travel. Um, and that works very well for us, keeping all the dogs safe. My dogs are very used to, to being in the car anyway because they come to work with me every day. So this is what works well for us. Now, when it comes to feeding the animals, they each obviously have their own bowl that lives in the van and their food is packaged up, portion sized for each day. And they know as soon as these food packets arrive, it's nearly time for food foods. Isn't it, baby? Stop eating everybody else's dinner, Perry. You're one. Girl. Now when it comes to a sunny day and you want to sit outside and relax, grab a, one of your outdoor chairs and sit down and share the moment with your dogs as well. There's obviously a way of keeping your dogs safe and still secured to your pitch because the worst thing is having your dogs running off and disturbing somebody else who's cooking their dinner. Um, so I use two pegs and a long line stretched between them and I attach their leads to that long line so they have the entire stretch to run back and forth um, which gives them lots of room but still keeps them safe and secured on our pitch. No need for wind breaks or anything like that, nothing that disturbs my view and enjoyment of the site but still keeps the dog safe and tethered. As for the cat, he is harness trained and when we are on a campsite his harness stays on him. Isn't it? Yes, yes. And on the occasion that I take him outside of the van for a little stretch of his legs to explore the grassy area or what have you, he wears his harness and has a lead. And if I'm sitting outdoors on my chair and he wants to join me, he has his harness on and his lead. And if he's not attached to me, then he's back in the van. Uh, not all dogs are cat friendly. And so it's to keep him safe from other people and other dogs, really. And he's an indoor cat anyway. So he's not one for venturing outside. But inside the van, if it's a warm day and you want ventilation, windows can go on the catch, open up. But we also have fly screens. And that keeps him inside while still getting the airflow through the van. And of course, we've also got the skylights to get airflow as well. And when we go out for the day, he will stay in the van mostly. It's, it's not common that he joins us on a day trip because most places, if they're dog friendly, they're not particularly cat friendly. And by that, I don't mean there are signs saying no cats or anything else. They don't have the amenities for a cat to go to the toilet. <laughs> and by and large, he's much more of a homebody. He would rather stay here in the van where it's quiet and he can catch up on his cat naps. Hey, Perry. Now, when it comes to sleeping arrangements, we do things slightly different in the van as we would do at home. And obviously your sleeping arrangements with your pets that's your call on, on, on how you do things. For us, at home, Amber, Luna and Tori will sleep on my bed with me. And Perry will sleep downstairs in the lounge because he is a pain to sleep with. He is a right fidget. In the caravan, it's slightly different. We don't have a downstairs lounge to shut Perry into. And if we pull the slide across to separate the bedroom, he will spend an hour scratching at that sliding screen which is no good, he's going to damage it. So in the caravan, I end up with Perry, me. Um, 
there's no room on the single bed for Amber to sleep with me and Luna and Tori. So Amber gets tucked up on the sofa. Uh, the girls, Luna and Tori, will sleep on my son's bed. And then Perry, sadly, sleeps on my head, usually. Now, providing a toilet area for your cat in a caravan is a little bit more challenging. Obviously, they can stink. <laughs> And your cat does need to be trained to use a cat litter tray. My cat is being an indoor cat. In our old va van, we used just an ordinary hooded cat litter tray that used to be in the lounge area. Wasn't pleasant, but needs must. In this van, we use the shower as a place to store his cat litter tray, which keeps everything contained and tidy. And for that, I use some IKEA boxes. Um, a smaller one at the bottom, which is very handy storage. I put uh, toilet rolls and all sorts in there. And the top one is for Perry's cat litter. And he can hop up on there, pop inside and go to the toilet whenever he pleases. We keep the bathroom door open. I use that same setup uh, as at home as well. Simply because having a raised rear entry toilet for Perry means that my dogs then can't get access and drag all of the contents out and enjoy their kitty litter treats because dogs are disgusting. Now oh, obviously taking your dogs to the toilet that's simple enough especially if the campsite has got a dog walking area just take them there let them do their business but make sure you have plenty of poo bags with you and dispose of them in the poo bins there's nothing worse than a site that's covered in dog poo and uh, yeah that's very frowned upon for good reason and something i'm asked a lot about taking the dogs on holiday with us is what do we do with the dogs when we want to go out we take them with us <laughs> we go to places that are dog friendly we don't leave the dogs behind in the van uh, it's not fair um they would stress out and i would stress out worrying about them as well Perry, I know, is, is very, very comfortable in the van all day. He is used to being at home on his own when I go to work. My dogs aren't. Equally, I can keep an eye on him as I have a, an Alexa Echo Show 5 in the caravan, which acts as a camera. So when I'm out and about, I can access that. That's a recent addition to the van. Before that, I used to have a ring camera that I would bring in from home to, to look through. Um, just to keep an eye on things and make sure he's okay and I could talk to him through it as well from time to time but the dogs mm -mm, they don't get it left in the van unless we're going to use the shower block or something on site for a very short period of time um, but yeah we choose destinations and venues that are dog friendly only if you want to eat out they're dog friendly it's their holiday too and we certainly wouldn't leave them shut up in a van because I know they would bark and get stressed and not enjoy themselves and that wouldn't be fair. So our holidays, the planning of our holidays is all dog centric to make sure that we can take them with us. Anyway, I think that's everything. I think so. If you've got any questions or any comments, feel free to drop them below. Um, if I've missed anything out, I'll see if I can do another video. Uh, but I think that's, that's everything that's related to dog and cat camping in a caravan. Uh, so yes, thank you for watching. If you like what you see, thumbs up, subscribe, all the rest of it. Love you lots. I'll see you soon.